So this past week I shot three videos about people who lowball you on Craigslist. Um, there's another um, even more devious um, scam that I run across on Craigslist. Um, I call it even more devious because when somebody lowballs you, uh, the motive is financial. They're trying to save a few dollars. But there's another whole universe of people who um, they contact you. They might set up an appointment, they ask all sorts of questions, they have no intention of ever buying the item. I'm not, I'm not sure about the psychology behind it. I think what happens is they see the item and it might be a $2,000 gold coin and it might be a little kid who doesn't have quite that much money and uh, he's just a dreamer and he maybe wants one someday and he, he, he starts out by asking you questions by making an appointment with you and uh, you go to his home and then you quickly realize that when he counts out all his allowance money that he saved up that he has like two hundred dollars at most and he just wasted a lot of time well I'm dramatizing there but you get the idea of uh, sometimes uh, people uh, misrepresent um, what's going on. This is more apparent with tutoring. So people, they, they sound like they're interested in, in um, your tutoring services or whatever services you're offering. And they, uh, what they do is they uh, uh, set up an appointment with you. And so you get ready, you block off the time on your calendar, and they disappear off the face of the planet. So what happens is that they had five or six different prospective tutors that they were looking at, and um, unfortunately, they didn't clarify that in the email. Um, they probably did this to everyone, the five or six tutors that they were looking at. As a result, uh, all but one of them wasted their time, you know, preparing for the session and blocking off the time on the calendar and perhaps sometimes even canceling other events during that time period. Um, and then you have, um, you have people who, uh, they misrepresent the deal. So they're selling of a coin for some amount of money you think it's a good deal and they might live a good 10 or 20 miles away and you drive there and they're like oh well we don't have the coin anymore oh but it turns out that uh, they had uh, never intended to sell it uh, maybe they were hoping you would go to their place so they could market other stuff uh, maybe they don't I, I don't know the psychology behind this but maybe they're just trying to get some action uh, maybe it's a lonely person, you know, a lot of coin collectors are very socially isolated and they don't even have, the, they didn't even have the coin to begin with. You know, maybe it's an outrageous uh, coin, like maybe it's a teenager who has a few cheap coins and he's pr purporting to have a, a rare double eagle to sell just to get some action, to see, to, to get involved with some of these big players. Uh, I, I've run into a few like this. Um, there are some people... Uh, when I'm doing ride sharing, when I used to do ride sharing as a driver, there would be people who were not 100% committed to the trip yet, but they um, made their uh, emails and their voice sound like they were so. So you ended up rearranging your trip. Uh, you Maybe you even drove to their house before you realized that they canceled. And so you waste a lot of time, you, re you rearrange your schedule, you waste gas driving to the person's home, and they just very casually say, oh, I, had, I, I changed my mind. You're at their door after having driven an extra 15, 20, 30 miles, and they, they just very casually say, oh, change of plans. They don't offer any apologies, they don't offer any compensation, oh, they, they, they treat it as if, you know, they, um, uh, you know, they treat it as if, you know, they, they um, just, it, it was their own personal issue, you know, just like, for example, I changed my plans on what I'm going to have for dinner tonight, you know, that doesn't affect anybody. They treat it almost as a decision like that, uh, when, when it really inconveniences other people a lot. Uh, I'm not sure the, the psych psychological motive behind this. I think a lot of it is just people want to dream. You know, they want to dream, that, like the teenager who purportedly had a double eagle to sell, he, he wants to dream that he had one and interact with some of these customers. He doesn't realize how much cost you know, it, it, it incurs to other people. Uh, the ride sharing and, and the tutoring I, I mentioned, they want to externalize the inconveniences. They're not sure about a ride share trip tomorrow, but instead of having the uncertainty uh, on their hands, they pass it off to some other guy. 
Thanks for watching.